teachers need to know about digital technologies? Well, what I want them to know doesn't exist yet, but uh, I am working with various people to try and help it, help bring some things into, um, into existence that will help teachers use digital technologies to carry on learning. Now, I don't know yet if people can access the mind map. Uh, is the mind map available? Um, no, not at the moment. Uh, when, it's, uh, when it's available, you'll see I've put up there some of the points that David raised when he spoke about the different forms of knowledge that teachers actually need to be able to draw on to uh, teach effectively. Subject content, of course, but how to teach the subject. General, general pedagogic knowledge. Knowledge of learners and their characteristics, aims and purposes of education, um, and on and on, as well as how to use technology effectively for teaching and learning. So the big challenge for societies is how do you keep your teaching population up to, up to speed with what's happening? We only have to look back 10 or 15 years to see the changes. Absolutely phenomenal. The cost of upskilling the teaching population is probably too high for any country to do using conventional means. But we've got educational um, development tools that we could, we could develop on the web uh, that could really help teachers keep up with the latest and get answers to their questions, the kind of questions that um, Dougal was talking about. Not just teachers looking for answers to questions about effective teaching, but parents and learners as well. And for those of you who've got access to the web, um, you might like to Google the following. Put in these words, Map of Medicine Health Guides. What you'll see there will vary depending on which country you're in, but all of you will be able to see an A to Z listing with various medical topics, and you'll be able to click on them and see a flowchart approach to this area of knowledge. Now, this was developed by doctors at a hospital in England who were training doctors, and instead of answering their questions all the time, one-on-one, -on -one, they started to write them down on PowerPoint. Um, and when, they, when the PowerPoints got too cumbersome, they developed some software to allow um, doctors who were learning to find their way through the knowledge base. This is what I'm working on for education, so that if you've got a question about how to teach X more effectively with Y type of child, that knowledge will be out there, but the chances of you finding it, well, they're probably no more than 1%. You might know somebody who can ask somebody, but by the time um, you actually find that person, the time might be passed. So there you go. I'm working on how we can have some kind of educational resource like that where we can capture the ideas, the explanations of teachers who are very expert in particular areas and make that available to our trainee teachers so they don't have to spend 10, 20, 30 years uh, working all of this knowledge up for themselves. Just picking up this point about assessment, I'd like to throw something which may be controversial into, into the debate. I, um, it's this question of whether a profession needs to be self-maintaining um, in terms of its quality and its accountability. And many professions now require annual registration and they require the people in that profession to show that they've undertaken professional development during the year. I happened to go away uh, with a doctor friend on one weekend and she was doing her annual registration and demonstrating what CPD she'd undertaken during that year in order to stay registered. The previous government in England did start thinking about this for teachers and I've been talking to colleagues here um, about, about this. Things like this are, are tried in some countries with mixed results. There's a bit of cheating about the registering of points and so on. But nevertheless, I think putting the onus on all teachers to undertake continuing professional development and to demonstrate that uh, before being annually registered, personally, I don't have a problem with it. I was in the health service before I came into education. We had to pay an annual uh, registration fee. And any of the people who were using our services could actually look up our qualifications in the register. We in England don't have this in teaching. And I have to say, why not? Why not? Let's have, let's have some self-monitoring. Let's drive the assessment ourselves as a profession. And let's set our own professional standards. So there you go. There's my contribution.